In this lesson, we're going to be factorizing trinomials like we have in the previous lessons, but this time around, we're going to have a lead coefficient. Now, right now, you might be thinking, uh, dude, Kevin, I don't even know what that is, bro. Let me show you. So, you know, in previous examples, we started off, or in previous lessons, we started off with some easy trinomials like this, where you didn't even have to take out a common factor. Then, okay, so that was uh, no common factor, no common factor. Then we, in the previous lesson, we looked at ones that go like this, 3x squared minus 6x take away 9. Um, and what we could have done with these ones is we could take out a common factor. And so, for example, what we did is we would take out a 3, and then you would be, because you, you, the number 3 can fit into all of these, right? So we would take out a 3, and then you would be left with something like that. And then it became an easy trinomial again, where the number in the front was a one. You see how the number in the front was always a one. But now, in this lesson, we are gonna be doing questions where you're gonna get situations like this. 2x squared, take away 5x, take away seven. So the number in the front is not a one, and you can't take out a common factor. So you, so you can't get rid of this. And now, it, it, it's a totally different type of way of factorizing to what I've shown you in the past. So let's get started. So here's our first example. So what you would notice is that, and so that's what's gonna make this, uh, this type of trinomial different, is that there is gonna be a number in the front that is left over. So here's our first example. Um, it's definitely a trinomial, but you can't take out a common factor. There is no common number that can go into 5, 27, and 10. So what do we do? So what we do is uh, make a little line like that and make a line like that, okay? This is weird at first. Now what you're gonna do is you're gonna, remember we normally used to start with this number, but now we're gonna look at this number over here, and I want you to put all the factors of five. So we could say one times five, but then you also have to do the reverse, five times one. We never used to do it like that in the past, but now with these ones, we have to do it a little bit differently, okay? Now here's 10, so we would say one times 10, 10 times one, but that can also be written as five times two, and then you must also say two times five. Okay, now, so that's step one. Now what you do, is you choose a number over here. Now, in the beginning, you're not gonna be very good at knowing exactly what number to choose, and that's okay. So let's just choose a random number. So let's choose uh, this number, okay? Then I want you to choose a random number over here. Okay, let's choose that one. Perfect. Multiply them together. What does that give you? 10, okay. Then I want you to look at this number and choose the opposite number, or cho choose its partner, and its partner is the one that's below. So you circle that one, and then you look at this one, and you choose its partner, which is that one over there. And then I want you to multiply those two numbers that we just circled, which is the five times one. What does that give you? Five. Okay, now what I want you to do is look at these two numbers, and together, could those two numbers ever give you minus 27? If you plus them or minus them, would it ever give you negative 27? Definitely not. So we've chosen the wrong numbers. So then you start all over again, um, trying to look for better combinations, okay? So let me remind you of the steps. You choose a number here, and you choose a number here. Okay, so let's do another one. I'll show you one that actually does work. Uh, let's go, here we go. Five, and then on this one, I'm gonna choose five. Multiply them, what does that give us? 25, ah, so we're getting close to the 27. That's a good sign um, if it's getting close. Then what you have to do is you have to choose the opposites. So we choose that one, and we choose the other opposite, which is that one. And then you multiply those two. What is that? Two times one, which is two. Ha ha. Now, if you look at these two numbers, ooh, that is that can give you 27. But we're trying to make minus 27. Okay, so we need the 25, we need the 25 to somehow be a negative. We'll we'll have to make a plan about that. And we somehow need the negative two to be a negative as well, because that together, those can give you negative 27. So what you do now is you make two brackets, okay? This bracket is where you put the top numbers, and then this bracket is where you put the bottom numbers. You can do it the other way around. You could also put the bottom numbers in this one and the top numbers in this one. But as long as you keep the top numbers together and you keep the bottom numbers together. So what do I mean? Well, this is the top, and this is the bottom. Okay, so the top numbers is a five and a two, 
the bottom numbers were a 1 and a 5. Okay, then we're going to put x's over here, 5x and 1x. Okay, now you've got to try to think about this. So if you had to multiply these two together, that would give you 25. But do we want that to be negative or positive? We want that to be negative, okay, because we're trying to make minus 27. So we'll put a little minus over there because now when you multiply them, that would give you negative 25. Okay, that's amazing. Now, when you have to multiply these two numbers together, what would that give you? Well, if this was a positive, then what would that give you? That would give you 2, okay? But you're not trying to make 2. You're trying to make a negative 2. So we fix that by changing this one to a negative as well. Now, we are done. If you had to go multiply this out, let's just do it just for the fun of it and just to make sure that we've done it correctly. So let's quickly use FOIL. You wouldn't do this in a test. It would take too long, but this, this is the answer. But we're just trying to make sure that it looks correct. Okay, so f the, the, the first times first, that's what the F stands for. So that's going to be 5x squared. Then it's the outer numbers. Okay, so the outer numbers is this one and this one. So that's going to be negative 25x. Then it's the inner numbers. So that's those two. So that gives us negative 2. And then the last times the last, which is those two, which gives us positive 10. Now, there's our negative 25, and there's our negative 2 that we were trying to get all along. And so if you had to go combine those, you would get negative 27x, and that's exactly what we had in the beginning. So these two brackets are correct. Here's our next example. So once again, you cannot get rid of this number. Um, you cannot take out a common factor that would go into 3, 4, and into 1. So once again, we are at one of these questions now where um, we have to use the new technique. So the only, so, 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 so whenever, if we had something like this, for example, where this number was a 1, then you can use the techniques that I showed in the old videos, or the previous lesson, sorry, where you only have to look at this number, and then you try to make this number. But as soon as we have a number that is left over in the front after we've tried to do fac um, common factors, then we have to use this technique that I've showed you now. So you take the factors of 3, which is 1 and 3, but then you also reverse it 3 times 1. Then you look at this number as well, and you do its factors, but that's only 1 times 1. Okay. Um, then what you do is you choose a number over here. So for example, um, I'll choose 3, and then you choose a number over here like that. So if you multiply them, that gives you 3. So that looks pretty good. It's getting close to the 4. Then you choose the opposites, which is this one. See, they're they the opposites of each other, and you choose this one because they're the opposites of each other. And then you multiply those two, and that's going to be 1 times 1, which is 1. Now, if you look at these two numbers, can you make a negative 4? Yes, you can. Negative 3, um, if you have negative 3, take away 1, that gives you negative 4. So that's good. Now we can go ahead and make our two brackets. Remember what we said. Put the top number together. So put the top numbers together and then put the bottom numbers together. But it doesn't matter if you put the top numbers in this bracket or in this bracket. It doesn't matter. But as long as you keep the top numbers together, so we'll put a 3 and a 1, and then you put the bottom numbers together, a 1 and a 1. Okay, so if you had to multiply these two together, it's supposed to give us this, so we put an n and an n over there. Okay, now we need to try and make this part, this negative 4n. So if you had to multiply these two brackets together, where do we get, where would we get n? Well, that would be when you multiply these two together, that would give you 3n, but do we want, we want the 3 to be a negative, so we'll put a little negative over there, so then if you multiply that, you would get negative 3n. And then if you had to multiply these two together, you would also get n, but we also want that to be a negative, so we'll put a negative like that, and that would be negative 1n. So you see together, those two would give us negative 4n. And so we're done. That is literally, those are the two brackets over there. Here's our next example. Can you take out a common factor? No, we can't. There is no number that can go into 7, 17, and 12. So we have to use our technique. So we do all the factors of 7. It's only going to be those two, actually. Um, and then 12. 1 times 12, 12 times 1. 2 times 6, 6 times 2. 3 times 4, 4 times 3. Okay. We should actually put a little gap in between them just so it's a bit clearer. Let's do that. 2 times 6, 6 times 2, 3 times 4, and 4 times 3. Right. Now we just choose a number. 
uh, but I'll try to save us some time. So, so for example, if you if you just look at these two, that's way too much. That's that's going to be seven times twelve, which is eighty four. So we don't choose that because we're trying to make we're trying to get as close to seventeen as we can. So, for example, if we go uh, seven times two, that might work. Let's see. Uh, seven times two is fourteen. Then you choose the opposites, which is this one and this one. So that would be six times one, and that gives us six. Now, 14 and six, you're never gonna be able to make 17. Okay, so we need to start the process again. Okay, so it can't be those two. Now, if we go seven times three, that's 21. And then if you choose the opposites, which would be four times one, which is four. Now, 21 and four, you could somehow make 17 by making it 21 take away four, because that gives you 17. Okay, so we are in business. So now we can open up our two brackets. Top numbers, I'm gonna put in the first bracket. So that's gonna be a seven and a four. Bottom numbers are gonna go in the next bracket. Then if I had to multiply these two together, it should give me seven K squared. So I'll put a K here and a K here. Okay, now we need to try and make 17. So that's K. So where would you get K? You would get K over here. That would give you 21K. And we want that to be positive. So we'll make that a positive. If you had to multiply these two, that would give you 4K. But we want that to be negative. So we put a negative over there. And then 21 take away 4 gives you 17. So we are done. Let me just put here 21K and negative 4k. You don't put this in the test, by the way. This is just me showing you that it works. Here's our next example. So there is no common factor that can go into 5, 22, and 48. By the way, sometimes there is a common factor. Um, for example, let's do this. So here you would, for example, if this was a question, there would be a common factor here of 2. So you would take out the 2, and then you'd be left with 5 plus 6 minus seven. So then you would still be left with a number in the front, and then you would just do the process that I'm showing you now. So sometimes you can take out a common factor, but it still leaves you with a number in the front, and then you still have to go do this whole method that we learned about in this lesson. Okay, um, but for this one, there's no common factor. So what we do, ooh, 48 is a big number. So we're gonna do one times five, five times one. Then it's gonna be one times 48, 48 times one. Two times 24, 24 times 2, 3 times 16, 16 times 3, 4 times 12, 12 times 4. Oh, 6 would also work. Okay, I need to make more space. So there's all the factors. So this is going to be quite a crazy one. So remember, you're trying to get close to 22. So for example, you would never say 5 and 48 because that's going to give you like 240. So that's way too big. So this might take a bit of time, but it's okay. It gets faster as you go. So for example, they have already found it. Um, my mind just naturally goes, it's, it quickly goes through all of these and it sees that most of them are too big. Um, I mean, like here, you, you can do it without writing it down. 5 times 2 is 10. 24 times 1 is 24. Uh, 10 and 24 are never going to give you that. So uh, my mind just quickly skips over that one. Okay? Like, for example, if you chose this one, that's 15, which looks okay, but then it's 16 and 1, so that gives you 16. So that's not going to work. But then if you look at this one, 5 times 6 is 30. Uh, let's write that up here, actually. Okay? And then 8 times 1 is eight. Now 30, 30 take away eight is 22. And that's what you want. Okay, so we open up our brackets. Top numbers I'm gonna put in the first one, five and eight. Bottom numbers are gonna go in the second bracket, one and six. Um, if you multiply these two together, it should give you five x squared. So we're gonna put an x and an x. Now, now we need to look at the x's, which is the 22. We need to get 22x. So if you, where would you get x's? It's if you multiply these two. What do I mean by that, by the way? Well, you wouldn't look at these two because that, that, that doesn't give you any x's. That just gives you numbers. But I'm looking for the x's. So that would be here. That's 30. Do we want the 30 to be positive or negative? Well, here it's 30. So this will be a plus. Then if you multiply these two, that would give you 8. But we want that to be negative. 
You see? So we put a little negative over there. So the final answer would be like that. Here's our last example. So there is no common factor. And so because we have a number in the front here, we have to go do this method. So, okay, we don't need that much space for these ones. So one times seven, seven times one, one times two, two times one. Okay, so we're trying to make 13. So straight away, I'm gonna go for seven times two because that gives me 14. Then you choose the opposite. One times one, which is one. So 14 and one, how would you make how would you make a 13? Well, you'd say 14 minus one. Okay, so let's go make our brackets. Top number in the first bracket, bottom number in the second bracket. Now, if you had to multiply these two, you want to get seven m squared. So you put an m there and an m there. Now, to, make, to look at the m's, um, that would be this one times this one, which is 14. We want that to be a positive. And then if you multiply these two, that gives you one m, but we want that to be negative. So what I do is I just put a negative over there. Okay, and so that is our final answer.